we're going to have in studio with us today, but also on the nightly news in more detail. And then back tomorrow in studio, uh, two gentlemen, James Lane, of course, uh, who was involved in the film A Noble Lie that we also sell at InfoWarsStore.com, uh, and Richard Grove. And Richard Grove's site is TragedyAndHope.com. Uh, FreeMindFilms.com is the main site for their films. I'm the exclusive distributor in the first three months or so uh, of State of Mind. That When I saw it, I just said, well, I'm going to get behind this. I'm in it. It's got a bunch of people in it. We're going to talk about this film. You can pre-order it now. It ships on the 15th of July. It premieres on PrisonPlanet.tv. And we're going to do a big taping tomorrow. It's actually tomorrow where we're going to talk about the film beforehand, stop a few times and talk about parts and developments. And it's, it, it's going to premiere for PrisonPlanet.tv viewers. I appreciate you guys having us do that. Uh, it's going to premiere on the 17th uh, of July, that Wednesday, uh, here coming up next month. But it's very important to support independent filmmaking. It's very important to wake your friends and family up. And believe me, this is a very professional film. I'm very honored to be part of it. It's even better because you get better as a filmmakers than their noble lie. That was a premiere film that was better than probably what I could do in many cases. So they're just, 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 just really doing an incredible job uh, with the rest of their team. And you can uh, get the film at State of Mind, The Psychology of Control. And uh, until it sells out, which should be any day now, this is the first 5,000 orders, you can get free uh, the animated film on the history of the Federal Reserve. It's very entertaining, great to wake people up. Uh, the American Dream. We'll have to take that down the next few days because we're getting very close to uh, 5,000 of these being sold. So take advantage of that at InfoWarsStore.com or by calling 888-253-3139. I may be able to get a better deal and, and get more of these and bring the special back, but we got a really good deal on these 10,000 of these, but we sold 5,000 of them and have 5,000 left. And I said, well, let's just offer that. It's such an important film and we got a really good deal on it. So I said, let's just offer it free. That's what I do. When I get stuff really low priced, um, then I just give it to you. Because my goal is all about waking people up. Uh, that's why the uh, new magazines out has 10 free bumper stickers in the July issue. Um, that's because I want to wake people up. I want to defeat the New World Order. I'm risking my life doing this because I've studied history. I want to make a difference. I want to empower people. Men and women that stand up for justice are what have made everything in our world good that's good. And there's always that struggle. Now, I was talking to James Lane, uh, the uh, founding of Free Minds Films and the director of A Noble Lie, Oklahoma City 95, and The Psychology of Control. And his mission is to alter the information paradigm with hard-hitting exposés of state crimes and cover-ups. And Richard Grove uh, uh, filed for federal whistleblower protection under uh, the Sarbanes-Oxley Act of 02. And we're going to get into that because that ties into the NSA and everything that's happening uh, right now. And uh, he's just done a whole bunch of work. I'm not going to get into his whole bio. You can find out more at tragedyandhope.com. But I've mentioned this. When I start thinking, what you said before you went live here, uh, James, whenever I start thinking about all the people I know that have been murdered, uh, and, in, and in many cases, when it's on record, they've been murdered. Nobody knows who. And then cop of the year, Terrence Yeagy, and, and you've interviewed his family. You know, they're in the uh, Noble Life film. He said the feds are after me to his par partner. They pull him over. They torture him, shoot him in the back of the head. Uh, I, I, then you interview the cop, Browning, the head of the canine unit that I've had on the show, naming FBI that walked in and said, you and your wife are dead if you don't shut up. Uh, I mean, I know the real world. And I know that it's a, a mafia that runs this, and the parallels of Terrence Yankee, cop of the year, and him seeing the feds involved in the bombing, first person to respond, and what happened to Michael Hastings, I mean, look at my gut, they killed him. Uh, James Lane talking about that and interjecting with Oklahoma City and the mind control of how we just, oh, our government's the good guys. It's tinfoil hat. They might kill somebody when it's on record they've done this over and over again. And then I want to get a Richard Grove's take on this and tie it into his whole whistleblower case. So, uh, gentlemen, good to have you here. Thank you for having us on, Alex. Uh, yeah, when I heard about the Michael Hastings case, that was the first thing, you know, that, that well, when the information broke that, that the, you know, the feds were following him. I, that's the first thing I think of is Terrence Yakey. And a lot of people would ask us, you know, it's 17 years on. Why are you still investigating the Oklahoma City bombing? Why does it matter? Well, because look at this. And if we, we don't expose these, we don't show people, this continues to happen. This is still a methodology that they will use over and over again. You know, with Terry, he, he was trying to take some documents uh, to, to some storage. And he said that the feds were following him. Then that's where they find him dead. Like, he said, I got to go. The feds are on my tail. Yeah. And, you know, they, they declared his death a suicide. 
Uh, you know, and it was very obvious uh, that, that it wasn't. I mean, he had the lacerations. All it was the Vince arm. Foster style. He, he had, uh, 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 was shot through the top of the head at a far enough distance that it didn't leave powder residue, et cetera. Um, and they got back when they did it, yeah. Right, and this was still whenever the, the official story was real uh, formulating in the public mind. And so they couldn't allow any information to come out at that time. It seems like, you know, well, after the operation has occurred, you know, that's okay. But, you know, right How mad do you think they are that our reporters took over all those Boston bombing press conferences? You know, they shot the guy that knew the, 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 the Patsy brothers in the top of the head, too. Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, that's getting in on the front end of it. This is where, you know, we we're trying to expose this stuff. If they're going to kill me for anything, I think it's that. I mean, I... Well, this is why your show is so important. I mean, who else is putting this information out, you know? Uh, so, yeah, I'm just... Uh, I, I, I don't mean to obsess on it. It's just I, I, my gut feels the danger level. Yeah. I feel the angel of death flapping around. I mean, I, you know, it's... Yeah, but with Terry, kind of interesting, huh? with Terry, he said, you know, uh, when the official story was starting to unravel, he said, that's not the way it happened. You know, he's very distraught over that. Um, and, you know, when they said uh, his family's asking questions, they're like, oh, you're just paranoid. You watch too much TV. And, uh, you know, it's, it's all about. What about Browning? Story. They come in his office twice and say, we're going to kill you and your wife. Yeah. And yeah, they basically said, yeah, people that ask questions like you, they end up dead. No, no them and their wife end up dead. Uh, FBI agent saying that to him, you know, and he said he knew that was a threat, you know, it was just a blatant threat. Um, and it's and he said again by the water cooler, too. Yeah, it's all about intimidation, you know, and just trying to, to squash the information. I got to be honest. I mean, somebody said that to me. I'd have a lot of trouble not, you know, punched him right in the nose. Yeah. But I mean, that's how cowardly America's gotten. Uh, Don has incredible courage to go public. I'm just saying everybody just grovels to the government. Oh, threaten to kill me. That's wonderful. Well, and this is part of why we wanted to make State of Mind is because once uh, the, a noble eye came out, we were asking why don't more people question the, these events, you know? And so we really want to look at the mechanism that put people into, uh, you know, conditioning uh, and, and, and in, uh, under a level of control where they don't question, where they just, uh, you know, accept uh, authority without, without question. Uh, and so we really wanted to break down the methodology of how it's done, not just the... the, the well, talk about mind control. People in national security, because I've talked to so many of them, friends, family, others, they're told, you ever don't do what we say, we're going to kill you. And it's this attitude of they're allowed to kill us. I mean, it's just, it's, it's, it's amazing. Yeah, oh, it's for the greater good, you know. It's like, yeah, sometimes they might have to kill Americans. It's, it's, you know, and we don't need to know about it because, you know, the government knows best. You know, and that whole mindset, where did that, where did that really solidify in, in, in people's minds? You know, we find that in public education, there was, this is really where it starts. It's not about learning to think critically using logic and reason. I mean, I had to deprogram myself after I got out of school and teach myself how to think because it was all about accepting authority and regurgitating useless facts so you become a cog in the machine. Tell us about your experience as a whistleblower. My experience as a whistleblower started out being a, a naive corporate worker. So I'm there just trying to, uh, you know, live up to the standards that I was brought up with through American culture. And then when you get into, uh, you know, the workplace and you're surrounded by people who might not have the same values, because I come from the Midwest, we have a different set of values than people in New York City. When you see things that are unseemly, when you see things that are illegal and you blow the whistle under protection, you expect protection from your corporation, not a standard operating procedure to fire you, to terminate you. And so... You know, going to court, I thought, well, well I'm going to get justification. I'm going to present evidence. Going to the media, I thought maybe they would cover the story. And after proving everything in court and going to people like Lowell Bergman, who said, yeah, this is, there's valid information here, but we can't cover it. And so then I just started to discover alternative media to go out and look beyond what I was being force fed through the Wall Street Journal or, you know, uh, USA Today is what they give you at the hotel, right? And I started reading into things like foreign affairs where you can see, you know, these people have a transnationalist agenda. They're here to collectivize America. They're here to undermine our education. And they do it also, they reinforce it through TV and corporate media. And so they're breaking down the self-reliance, self-esteem, self-confidence of Americans to make us spineless. And that's reinforced, uh, as you've noticed many times or observed on your show, uh, the father figure in sitcoms, spineless individual who's being run into the ground, can't solve problems by themselves. And so by taking away the intellectual tools of how to learn anything for ourselves, they've made us very, very dependent on authority. I got to get this guy on more often. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're really lucky to get him to come on board as the uh, head researcher and writer for... Yeah, I didn't go over your whole bio. Tell folks a little bit more about yourself. Well, uh, let's see. After finding out that corporate media was kind of debunked and it's uh, on its way out because they no longer have investigative journalists or, or budgets. Uh, I'll pull that a little closer. You're good. 
<laughs> then you start to notice uh, these, these press conferences. Actually, uh, you're good. I'm aiming it right at you. you it's on you now. And you start to notice the uh, the press uh, the the contradictions. You start to pick up on the contradictions and you start to dig into it. And what I thought, you know, when I first was still wearing a suit at corporate corporate world every day, was that. Uh, well, this will just pass. This Skip just, this network break, guys. Go, keep going. This is just something that you see on the internet that has no credibility. But when I dug into books like uh, Carol Quigley's Tragedy and Hope or the Anglo-American Establishment or John Taylor Gatto's The Underground History of America. It's just all admitted. Scientific Dictatorship is Chapter 9 in Gatto's book. And it explains clearly uh, Bertrand Russell and these other transhumanists, transnationalists. Uh, you know, all these different agendas that you cover on your show, they all have commonality. This is a finite planet. The globalists are a finite group of people. And Hastings or Jeannie Palfrey or Gary Webb or any of these other investigative journalists or, or people who have uh, had stories that, you know, needed coverage, they have to come here because luckily we have a place, some place on this planet that does have the budget to get these big interviews. I don't have the ability to do this myself. I couldn't interview Sergeant Joe Biggs today and break that story. So I'm grateful that there are people out there that are, you know, Aiding you and assisting you because I've seen you struggle over the years, and uh, well, I'm trying. I, I'm trying to get other. That's why I try to support other media outlets, show that we're not one of the only ones doing it. Uh, because I, I just want to win this thing. It's not about being a big media guy. I mean, if I'm successful, they'll probably take me out somehow. You know, if not physically, politically. So my mission is almost like a mushroom to get my spores out there, so that there's a million mushrooms, so they can never wipe us all out. That's why I've got the reporters. That's why I'm trying to build an organization so even if they get me, it continues because then that makes killing me obsolete. I mean, these are the type of thoughts we have to have around here. Well, it's worked because, I mean, this, this was the inspiration for me to start Free Mind Films was I wanted to, to be able to participate in this and create tools uh, because we have our roots in street, street activism. So I want to be able to give people tools that they can take to their friends and family, the uninitiated, and, and, and present it in a way where, you know, it, it's acceptable. To them, you know, it's like it, it. It's not just for the choir. We want this to 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 show to the uninitiated where you can really give them a foundational understanding of of you know the control, and then maybe be able to escape it, and then just start look at the bigger pictures. You know, state of mind is kind of a starting point. So it gives you the tools to communicate with your friends and family and coworkers in a credible and desirable way. And it also is backed by a lot of research where we're able to bring you uh, in depth. So for the choir, there's something else. And for the congregation, it's, it's something meaty. So you have this additional information that is available if you want to dig in past the film and see about any of these underlying agendas of MK Ultra uh, or eugenics or any of these other things that are covered in its depth and entirety with references. Tell folks who all is in the film. Uh, well, we have uh, Gira Griffin, we have uh, Anthony Schaefer. Uh, he was specifically talking about some of the, the uh, PSYOPs, you know, uh, kind of breaking those down with his uh, experience in the uh, uh, military intelligence. Uh, we've got uh, uh, several uh, psychologists. Uh, we've got um, uh, Colin Ross. Um, we've got uh, John uh, Rappaport. Uh, Bruce he, Levine. Bruce Levine. And, and Bruce Levine, I actually uh, found him through one of the uh, shows that you did on uh, Prison Planet. And the guy is, really comes up with solutions. It's not, uh, you know, it's not just pointing it out. He, he comes up with ideas. He's a great psychologist. Yeah. Uh, and uh, get, it, what, get Up Stand Up, I think, was his book. And it, was, it was very inspirational. Uh, we've got uh, Charlotte Iserbeet, uh, you know, uh, Kay Beach, uh, great activist, um, uh, you, yourself. Uh, so really good lineup of people, a real broad spectrum. And to get the psychologists in there, man, they've got a way of just getting right to the heart of the matter, you know, uh, be it, uh, you know, pharmacological control of society uh, or, you know, the uh, coming up with uh, disorders like anti-authoritarian personality disorder. You know, th these types of things. Which should be, do, doesn't want to be a slave disorder. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so we're, we're, we were really pleased with the lineup. I think uh, I think these, these folks really get the message across. Well, the film is available at InfoWarsStore.com, State of Mind, The Psychology of Control. And it's so important to get the film so that you're informed at a higher level so you can wake up your friends and family, but also to support uh, these filmmakers and what we're doing. You vote with your dollars. We're not like MSNBC and others that get taxpayer funds. We don't get Rockefeller Foundation funds. We are supported by viewers and listeners uh, out there like you. And uh, we also have it on uh, Blu-ray because I said, hey, you know, we're going to put this out on DVD. Uh, I, you know, I paid to put some Blu-rays out uh, as well because uh, Obama Deception 2 is going to be out on Blu-ray. And, you know, uh, the whole issue here is, is it's good to have a hard copy of things like this as well. We will premiere it on InfoWars. Uh, nightly news of the 17th uh, as it's already being shipped out to everybody that buys a hard copy then obviously that'll be available to people out of the gates a film 
for everybody to be able to see free after it's been on prisonbonded.tv. But you have to understand something. That's because they want to get the information out to people. Uh, and if they don't sell enough to make their money back, there won't be any more films. So uh, we're, we're right at the level at, at current sales that may be within three, four months, uh, because that's really the, you know, the main life of a film that it tapers off to try to even make their money back. So for heaven's sakes, folks, we're up here risking our lives. You guys definitely risk your lives in the Oklahoma City uh, film. People, they kill a lot of people over that. Uh, so we're here risking our lives. You need to buy the film. I mean, people out there should buy five copies and give it to friends and family. People should get prisonplanet.tv memberships. And, and you know, you should... Uh, you know, after uh, premieres live that night, you know, during the live show, then we're going to go to tape and play the film. Uh, you should uh, use your prisonplanet.tv membership, you know, the next day when you have the high quality download of it off the site to have your friends and family come over, you know, maybe the 18th uh, and or, or, or watch it live stream that night. Uh, you, the whole point is, is that it's now time to go out and proselytize for liberty to other people. Uh, I want us to beat this evil, and we've got to become aware of the evil if we have any chance of doing it. And and what do you guys think is happening? Because you're both really smart guys. I've heard your radio shows you know, over the years. Why well, I feel like I know you so good, even though we've only met a few times in the past when you were making films. Why do you think they're racing ahead right now? And why do you think the agenda is coming out in the open? Because people are spinning it saying, he, you know, Snowden must be an agent and blah, blah, blah. But I've experienced every time I do something, I know I'm not an agent. I know I'm real. Uh, and they say, oh, he must be an insider, you know, because uh, of the fact that he's been successful. It's almost like this idea that no one can be successful but evil people, when that's not true. That's what's so frustrating. So so what do you think's happening in the state of the battle right now? When we were talking about this uh, just before the show, it's it's like, you know, trying to hold a ball underwater. It's natural status to pop out. and they're inflating have to exert, the ball. Yeah, we have, they are exerting so much control to keep it underwater. And these types of efforts, yes, inflate the ball. Brzezinski said his greatest fear is a massive global awakening of consciousness. And that's what they're seeing right now. They're seeing the internet used and, and social networks used in a way that they never imagined. They wanted to uh, data mine us, to use artificial intelligence, to chew on that data mining, to provide profiles, to predict our behavior and control us like human resources. And now they're predicting their, their defeat. Yeah, absolutely. And so people are waking up faster and faster and the massive global awakening of consciousness is stimulated by independent media. We are the ones waking people up. Everyone who does something on their own without being told by an authority to do it or a big corporation paying you to do it, thinking on our own, using our creativity and imagination, that which corporate society and education wants to snuff out by reigniting those flames of liberty, then evil doesn't have to happen because good people do nothing. Good people know how to do something and get it done. <laughs> And all it takes is to get involved. Just one one step leads to the next, you know. I mean, a lot of this starts out with just local activism or, like you said, take the bumper stickers, you know, put them on a car, give, these, give the, the, the magazine. Big things have small beginnings. What did you make of, of Staff Sergeant Biggs on saying, I've just got to stand up. I can't be a coward. My gut tells me this is bad. It doesn't add up. And, and, and now others will stand up, and then they'll crush people. What I found is when they crush whistleblowers, it scares the cowards. They're already cowards, but it makes the real men and women actually fight harder. I see them having to kill a bunch of people as the beginning of the end. It, yeah, the last desperate act. I mean, I, I think that, you know, we see that we're getting closer to critical mass. I mean, it's everything's out in the open. I mean, some of the T-shirts I wear and stuff, I just got, you know, random people will come up and start talking about the NSA, you know, coming out saying, uh, you know, that they're, they're monitoring everybody. It's like, well, you know, everybody was talking about this, you know, 96, 97 with Echelon and, and Carnivore. You know, it's like, well, now it's just out in the open. Uh, and so much has come out. Again, you said, you know, social media. We're taking their tools and using them against And them. everybody remembers that they made fun of us and said we were crazy liars. And then exactly what we told them came, tr it came true because it was already there. No. Yeah. It didn't come true. They just took the blinders off. Yeah, it was what, uh, we're not six profits, with the... But they have business plans. And if you read these business plans, you can understand their agenda. No, that's it. They have business right. plans. Exactly. And they're intellectually bankrupt. They're irrational. They use force, fraud, and coercion to attain their goals. That's another thing. I've studied these elitists. They have the most unhappy families. Their kids are all committing suicide. I mean, it's not good for them either. Right. I mean, it's not good to screw everybody over. It's going to come back on you. Yeah, and well, and I mean, their their, their pure ego, their pure uh, just will, and that's why I think why there's so much infighting within their own ranks. You know, thank God. Yes. <laughs>
Well, and one of the other things we've lost in this country is integrity as a core value. When people in this country say they value truth, the people who read... My most valuable possession is my integrity. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, I really enjoy... It's not just like I'm a goody two-shoes. I feel good knowing that I really am a good guy. That's why they always try to say I'm not good, because the system knows... They know that. They don't want you to think there's other good people. Well, integrity is doing what you said you were going to do when you said you were going to do it. And it's about that consistency that your friends and family can trust you and coworkers. And so the, the, our whole society is based on trust. And JP Morgan said at one point, the entire banking system is made on trust. And they've broken that trust. They've broken that trust. They've abused their system. And that's what's causing people to wake up. And they're not going to go back to sleep because there's only more and more and more substance to find. Wow, man, awesome. Let's come back and do another segment or, or two. Great job with the crew in there and all the listeners. Uh, and then you're going to be on the news tonight. Back for an hour tomorrow to get into the film itself. We're going to play some video clips tomorrow. Uh, and I want to ask you when we come back, though, I mean, what did you make of that Biggs interview? You were out there listening. What did you think of that? It was fantastic. I mean, it's really great that somebody today can see that there's something going on and have the urge and the motivation to make a phone call and spread that information. And go against the mind control. Right. All the peer pressure. The important thing about the Pro One filter today is that the material we use for removing fluoride and other heavy metals now will remove the latest form of fluoride called hydrofluorosilicic acid. There's no other fluoride reduction filter out there that will remove that type of fluoride. And it's extremely important because Today, we're hearing more and more cities are using that form of fluoride. We've been having medication forced on us through the water system for quite a while. Most people don't realize it. Most people don't realize the negative effects of fluoride. There's a wide range of health effects that are attributed to fluoride. Bottom line, why should somebody get this new Pro One Pro Pure filter? The reason to buy the Pro One, it's an all-in-one filter. It's convenient, easy to use. It doesn't require the add-on fluoride filter. And in addition, this filter removes the latest form of fluoride called hydrofluorosilicic acid. By the way, here's a Herald Sun article. Hastings previously revealed he'd been subjected to death threats during his investigation of General McChrystal, saying it was commonplace in his line of work. Wherever I'd been reporting around groups of dudes whose job it was to kill people, one of them would usually mention that they were going to kill me. And it's not a joke, ladies and gentlemen. We have a degenerate ruling class of corporate anti-liberty fascists using disgusting socialism at the grassroots to create a bunch of sycophantic, lazy dolts to be used as political weapons to pull down society. I mean, every message you see out there is anti-family, anti-this, anti-that. And all the fake equality moves you see promoted are not about real equality. It's about the federal government manipulating groups of people against each other. I mean, it is unbelievable. But, but there's the Herald Sun. And, and I'd forgotten, because I remember reading this about a year ago, that he was being death threatened. And, and then his buddy mentioned it, and then... It was the weirdest thing. I wasn't even searching it. I already had an article up there about reporter Michael Hastings sent panicky email. And then I just looked as he was talking to me. And there was the Herald Sun with it saying it. While he's talking about it, I'd seen that nowhere in the news. And the article I had up said it from two days ago. I mean, it's just, it's, it's hiding in plain view. And his wife comes out and says, we're going to find out who did this. We're going to take down whoever did this. And I'm telling, you know, uh, he said off air to me that she was busy, should have got this on air, you know, in grief right now. He may have said it on air, it all mixes together. But she better either decide to pack it up and shut up, and that's still a dangerous course, or go totally public now. That's probably the safest course. Uh, the, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's not very safe to just say I'm going to shut up because they know that she may go public later. Uh, and look, th they'll kill her. I mean, they'll kill everybody. Uh, because I, I've been talking about this for two weeks since it came out in the New York Times. It just reminded me that hundreds of thousands of U.S. troops got nerve gassed. Even USA Today admitted it. Our government ordered the stuff blown up, knew the wind was blowing right into Kuwait, let them huff it, said, take your mask off, just like the World Trade Center collapsed, because they didn't want to admit it was hurting them when the detectors went off. Just take your mask off as a sign of, see, it's safe. By the way, we're going to helicopter out of here as the generals real fast, knowing it was a slow death death sentence. 
did they cross anybody? No, it's like they get off on hurting people. What do you think that psychology is? Because they use psychology on us, but they're the ones that are really screwed up. Well, I mean, they're psycho a lot of uh, the hallmarks of uh, psychopaths. I mean, you know, and it's uh, psychopaths are what, uh, genetic and uh, environmental, and they're told from birth that they're, you know, uh, through social Darwinism, that they're superior to, you know, all the rest of us. And yeah, it's 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 like uh, Orwell talking about, you know, it's the it's the thrill of victory over helpless uh, victim. You know, and trampling and being trampled forever. Yeah, and that's one of the things that Dr. Bruce Levine talks about in in State of Mind is learned helplessness. And I think this is what you know uh, people have to overcome uh, in order to to really get engaged and get involved. And it's you know after so many times of thinking that they can't do anything that that they are powerless, then they just start stop trying. You know, and it's just getting that, getting up, getting that motivation to try. Stop again. giving up. And like this, this uh, uh, big uh, man, he, you know, he's he's not going to roll over. He's not. He doesn't have the learned helplessness. He says he's going to get involved and do something. And you know, more brave people like that need to step up. And that's that's where we hit the critical mass. Well, he made the decision on air. He said, "I'm going to do more. I'm going to go full into this." And, and and I could hear him doing that. And I didn't tell him, you know, who I thought was behind it and stuff off air to scare him. I wanted him to know, and it was so he understands. Okay. Listen, you, you're not you're not imagining this, bud. Your your common sense, you know, they killed your buddy. And if you're going to come out, come out big, you know, because then it, it, more people will be aware if they actually. That's what Garrison said. Yeah, Jim Garrison. Yep. Lieutenant Colonel Anthony Schaefer says in his, his extended interview, I think it got cut from the film, but it's, he says at one point, he explains very clearly that the Pentagon's rules for information warfare include assassinations. And so he explains that uh, if there's a political figure, if there's an activist figure, if there's a whistleblower figure, that that falls under the realm of info war, of psychological warfare and info war, the carrying out of assassinations on activists. So you're looking at intraspecific kleptoparasites. You're, these are people of the same species who are preying on us. They, they prey on our, uh, we produce. They Say that again. Intraspecific kleptoparasites. Did you coin that? No, it's a 1952 paper by Miriam Rothschild. So they study animals. They, there's a whole bunch of Rothschild species from, you know, they use their money to study animals and human beings to understand us and control us. So there's Rothschild giraffes, butterflies, all these different things. So they find no, I knew they named yeah, a lot of animals after themselves. Yeah. Right. So they came up with this term for uh, it was it was a gulls that they were studying at the time. But they're saying uh, of the same species preying on each other. And that's sure, well, that's what I've said is that's what it is. It is predator guilds above us. We we are not the apex predator. The psychopath inbred guild is the apex predator. Well, and they've built protection systems over time. So these are multi generational guilds of of uh, psychopaths, of, of sociopaths, of people who don't care about anyone else's free rights or, or free will. Well, they enjoy, actually. Yeah, they get off on taking the power. I mean, look at the BBC with their child raping guild. I mean, it's, you know. And they need people's fear to control them because fear shuts down your mind. It makes you stimulus response. Stimulus response is slavery. Stimulus thinking response is freedom. We have to put that thinking back in between stimulus and response. What would you call the instinct just to absolutely have to resist this? That's my resi I mean, I'm trying to stop species death. My whole instinct is defend humanity, stop these people. I think that's just being human, man. I think that's just the human response to this abnormal situation that has gotten out of hand because we've been lied to for so long. But now we're and what happens out. is good people are just as mean or even meaner than these mean people. We just don't get in that mode. They know right. once we get in the mode, they're right. done. Right. Once we get in the mode, it's over for them. Right. And we have to be serious about this because there's no do-overs. There's no mulligans. Right. And so we all have to work together. We have to unite all the forces. Uh, you know, and get together on common ground. We have commonality with every other human being on this planet, insofar as that we want our right to live. We want our right to property so that we can preserve our life and these sort of things. And this other group just wants to take that away. And there's a long, credible history to it. And it's sad that American children are being denied that education in school. Well, they admit it's a multi-thousand-year war against humanity, and that's why they call it the final revolution, finally breaking us where we can never de de uh, defeat them again. Well, and it's, you know, it's very obvious uh, you know, to all the listeners you know, that it's moving towards a collectivist plan. I mean, that's all the, the obvious goal. But now you're try getting, trying to get a lot of individualists to act in, in, in a collective manner, and it, it is difficult sometimes. But it's just because, you know, maybe uh, this pro activist path is different than the other. That doesn't mean that we're not all heading to the same destination. All roads lead to the end of the New World Order. Exactly. And in fact, the fact that we're going in so many different directions is why they can't stop us.
that that's been my goal is just to generate as many resistance operations. So the so fact that we're becoming autonomous mm -hmm. because we're thinking for ourselves and directing ourselves and nobody's telling us to go out and do this. American schooling is based on a Prussian schooling model, which as you very well know, uh, leaves people to be obedient servants, not self critic, you know, self thinkers that are critically thinking about their life. The most important thing I do now is everywhere in public, even my wife or kids are there, I just start talking about the new world order and, and I make a big scene. And in a nice way, when somebody tries to peck at me in a bureaucratic way, I just go, "Okay, let's 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 get it out in the open here. Uh, this is going to be, you know, this goes two ways. I'm about to inform you." And they always go, "I actually know that's true." I go, "You know, you're a slave. You know, the system's after you. You know, you're acting pathetic on a power trip, imagining you're in charge." Tune into your real humanity right now and stop acting like that. And it almost always breaks their trance. Well, and they've wrote books about this through history, like 1939, H.G. Wells' uh, New World Order. He very clearly in there says that they want to create a world government uh, and create a new religion. That new religion is non-critical thinking. It's stimulus, response, operant conditioning is the religion. It's robot. That, robot, exactly. Yeah, I'm just I'm turning people into a cogs in a machine. What was it like for you as you began to discover this stuff? It was pretty scary because everyone was just like, drop it and go back to work. Go find another job. Just get along to go, you know, go along to get along. Don't worry about this. And, and people were saying, look, it doesn't really matter if there's a backdoor in the Sarbanes Oxley software that's federally mandated to protect from another Enron or Tyco. And Tyco was one of my clients. And they said, we don't want to keep this data like the regulations say. We want to use the back door so we can hide all this stuff. So what you see with the financial collapse and all this NSA spying is they've kept every piece of information except the evidence to catch the people who stole the, the quadrillions of dollars. Well, no, it, it's just like the electronic voting machine software always is designed to let the hacker in and then close it and right. cover it up. Right. It's a system designed for crime. Right. I mean, unbelievable. It's a, it's a prophylactic product, but that prophylactic has a hole in it purposely because they're, they're trying to get uh, America pregnant with this criminal syndicate. Well, well, what they do is they always create trap doors for them, but that we don't know about. Right. Like all the rich people, they don't pay any taxes. They don't give tips. These globalists are all the same. That's why people always hate the Bilderberg so bad. They'll go and have like $500 a piece dinners and then not even pay for it and taxpayers pay and then no tip and then say, I want this man fired. He looked me in the eyes. I mean, can you imagine controlling trillions of dollars, having hundreds of billions in your account, and you enjoy the fact that the waiter can't pay their bills? You enjoy they're not doing good. You enjoy, I mean, can you imagine that? Well, well in the corporate world, uh, it, you know, like I said, when you find out about this stuff, it seems incredible or uh, like it's not credible. But then you find a book like David Rothkopf's uh, Superclass. He's a member of the CFR mm -hmm. and this Carnegie Institute. So he's telling you there's 6,000 individuals around the world who act as a superclass to whom laws don't really apply. And they control uh, what we think is voted on with, uh, you know, checks. Rothkopf told me off air when he was head of the Kissinger Group. He said, Why John Harmon was around the show and heard it. He goes, I came on. I know, I know who you are, Alex. I came on because you need to join us. You need to be part of this. I'm just like, and they always, it's always the same. True believers. Well, they told me, you see it, you need to be part of it. The public will tear you into pieces. Well, and I think a lot of that plays into the learned helplessness whenever they're too big to jail, you know, and they, they know, you know, if somebody else goes and steals a, uh, you know, a hundred, couple hundred dollar TV or whatever, they're in prison. These guys are still, you know, trillions right. and, and not anything happens to them. That plays into the learned helplessness. You know, it's just, that's more of the- Well, no, it's like a pimp in that famous HBO piece. Uh, you know, the, the, she's been beat up, run over. Uh, she, you know, she's got broken bones, disfigured. And 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 uh, the pimp's going, you know, HBO goes, what do you pay her? And he goes, nothing. He goes, she's lucky if she eats once a day. She's lucky if I give her fried chicken. And the mother goes, how'd you do this to my baby? And the woman's groveling to the pimp. And and that's what that's what TSA, all of it is, is just worshiping that we're scum and filth. And the cops can kill us whenever they want, taser us whenever they want. Uh, it is just, it, it is, the we, they are breaking our will. And the mind control uh, the, of the pimp over the prostitute is no different than the person who owned a gladiator back in the day. A, a man small and snatched stature <clears throat> could, could use fear and words and mind control a bigger man and get him to fight for entertainment. So what you have is uh, the New World Order, the difference between them and us is, is that they don't have faith in the public. They think we're animals and we have faith in the public. We know people can adapt, evolve and overcome. They can learn, they can reignite their curiosity and start to take it upon themselves not to be a victim in this system that makes everyone a victim until you know what's going on. Well, I just think it's important to get crazed again, like an original human and just get angry. We have the instincts of the programming to crush psychos. They need, they need to be crushed.
I mean, that, that, that's what got me motivated was just the anger over it. You know, it's like have, that, that after that, you can't stop. You know, it's like, you know, again, just that first step and you get you get the motivation, you get moving forward and getting angry at first is part of it. You know, that's uh, how you start I'm a, thinking. I'm a, I'm a free human being. I mean, it's like, uh, what is it like drawing the blood to here in, in, in Texas? Checkpoints. It's like, what? I, if I don't, I don't even own my blood, you know? Well, they're just <laughs> normalizing the tyranny. Yeah. And the general public's like the broken whore going, but he's my baby. You know, he's taking care of me when he beats me with a coat hanger. I mean, it, it, it's just incredible. And the anger is when you break out of the trance. It's the outrage. It's the transfer from the anger to outrage where you actually start thinking and dissecting and paying attention and focusing on what they're doing. I think that's the step that people need to go through. And then it's the resistance at any opportunity of the targeting. Just every level, you're going to bring them down. You're now in a war with them. And it gives your life meaning because... Survival is victory, and we've always been fighting for survival. This is what humans are meant to do. And, and we are under this scientific technocracy, the scientific dictatorship they're trying to complete. And the messages we've transmitted are going to grow in power against them as their program rolls out. This is going to echo forever. We don't know what chain reaction we're engaging in right now that will sever their control. Yeah, and then after you start to develop a love for humanity, then you know that's that's really where you you, you broke free. You know, as as you, you know, remove your conditioning, you know, again start to learn reason, logic, how to think. You know, I, and I, commit. I mean, yeah. what about the feeling of commitment? Uh, but I think the love, the love for humanity, that's what that's what drives, uh, you know, so many of us, I think, to, to continue to do what we do and risk it. I think you commit to think or not to think, and you have to make that choice. You're either going to be a thinker or you're going to be someone who responds to all the stimulus. America's future lies in individuals having autonomy, being able to ask questions, because all learning starts from the question mark. They teach us with declarative sentences in all these books. So you can't gain knowledge from hearing someone else use a declarative sentence. You have to go through your observation, identification, organization, and communication process to actually learn. They're killing the scientific method. Right. right. So they're, they're doing this to us because they are kind of jealous of us. They can't be happy just with what we have as normal human beings. They have to have it all. They have a sickness, call it greed, call it aggression, call it whatever you want. Control freakism. Control freakism. And they've been trying to dissolve everything that made America what it was to stand alone from the British and reintegrate us into an Anglo-American establishment. So, you know, through the legacy of Cecil Rhodes and the CFR and Pilgrim Society and Foreign Affairs and all these different, you know, working groups and, and different projects. Yeah, tell me about this Foreign Affairs publication. Right, so this Foreign Affairs article, uh, basically it's talking about transnationalism and transnationalists do not have grandiose plans for a one world government but they but they give various rules of force of law without having to win majorities uh, for those uh, for those rules in democratically elected legislatures. So basically, through this idea of transnationalism, they're changing America. We don't want law. world government. We're just above the law, right? And and they're above the Constitution. And so, in very clever word speak, you can learn. I mean, because they they no, they always yeah, say yeah. we're not setting up world government. Right. We're setting up global governance. I first became a fan of uh, foreign affairs. Uh, there's a 1998 no November issue. Show people. It's got the red tag on there. Uh, where they uh, talk about Osama bin Laden, uh, you know, war on terror, and all these things f like three or four years before 2001. And the same people are writing the articles. Uh, Zelikow is one of the people. He was in, in charge of the 9-11 Commission. So you can totally see how they put out a business plan in a couple different articles in one CFR magazine in 1998. And then that comes to fruition. And then later. PNAC rewrites it right. in September 2000 and says, we need, we need a Pearl Harbor attack so we can invade Afghanistan and take everybody's liberty. Right. I mean, they don't even mince words. It's all planned. It's right out in the open. Yeah. So, yeah, but you just gotta you just gotta do the research. Just find it, and that's what's you know again great about you know being able to get the resources that you know. But that's what's there. frustrating is it's all admitted, and it's all out there. Like Dallas said, America Americans don't read. But all these books, like I have 20 or 30 books just on the Rothschilds, autobiographies, biographies, like this is their own primary sources. This isn't some tertiary. No, no, book. they say right. they're doing it. Right. It says on their own website, this is their history and you know, Battle of Waterloo and the whole history that you hear about as conspiracy is on the official Rothschild websites. So as I went through and familiarized myself with how these all these social institutions like uh, Roll Call, Congressional Quarterly, Economist, those are all Rothschild entities. The official magazines of our Congress are owned through the Rothschild banking empire. So when you look at their control over media and politicians... CIA st uh, set up National Review. Sure. And so it's not just one group of people. There's a common agenda of a collectivism that's gone on through history. And the individual is not able to demonstrate intellectual self-defense until you grasp the same tools that they're using against you. And you use them for yourself, for liberty, and the liberty of others, instead of trying to uh, oppress everybody like they're doing. Man, it is so amazing that, that, that they own the whole fake spectrum of alternative media... 
uh, you know, the so-called alternative media like uh, Foreign Affairs, which is actually put out by the CFR, and they act like it's alternative, uh, or you get things like National Review, and then I know I built all this myself with my listeners, and I'm not controlled, and I know there's other people that aren't controlled. I think that's what's really freaking them out, is that they were going off an old paradigm that, oh, they won't know how to use video editing. They won't know how to use this. They won't be able to do that, but it backfired. I don't, I think they're in deep trouble. Those are unhumorous, you know? Uh, and what is it, um, Hillary Clinton said, you know, they're losing the information war. I mean, they're, they're, they're coming out saying it. What the gods would conquer, they must first divide. And if we make ourselves individuals who are unassailable intellectually, and we can bind together voluntarily with other individuals to secure our liberty. Now you can watch Alex Jones live at Infowars.com forward slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. You can also browse the network, the Infowars Nightly News, and over 60 movies and documentaries all together in one place. You can watch the Alex Jones Radio Show live as it happens. So check it out, Infowars.com forward slash show. James Lane and Richard Grove are our guests, FreeMindsFilms.com. You can get the new film, State of Mind, and get a free film with it at InfoWarsStore.com for a very limited time, and that supports the broadcast. You guys will be back on the Nightly News tonight and back in studio with me tomorrow where you head back to your hacienda in Oklahoma, and then we're going to shoot a big special report tomorrow that will uh, air when we premiere uh, State of Mind for the PrisonPlanet.tv viewers. But uh, you guys, in the last five minutes, make any other points, because I really agree with your analysis you guys have done your research, and uh, I, I just think it's fantastic uh, to see the uh, knowledge of the globalist tyranny spreading. We now have the fire of Prometheus, which uh, with which we can burn the devil to the ground. Well, we were saying that state of mind touches on uh, every subject that that's covered on Infowars. This is a this is a hub that people can use to to show the friends and family all the spokes that they can go from there. It's a it's a jumping point. Cyber applies to every subject you guys cover on Infowars, and so it's the it's the primary thing. When we send our kids out to public schools without letting them know how to tell when someone's lying to them, you know, we we send our kids out in the world unprepared, and we never really outgrow that extent. If you send lessons. them letting them know it's a brainwashing camp, it'll actually work against the enemy. Because right. your kids genetically know to listen to you. Right. So they spend a lot of time trying to divide and conquer our homes. And what the gods would seek to conquer, they must first divide. So if we recognize that there is an info war, there's a war on for our mind, and we need, to get with our, we need to get together with our friends and family, and we need to learn our way out of this. We need to act voluntarily to form groups. And that's how we keep ourselves safe, not by waiting for the state or the authorities to come and protect us. You know, in the case of Boston, there's a million people on lockdown to find one 19-year-old suspect. That's unreasonable. That's insanity. Uh, yeah. It's, yeah, it's, it is And insanity. just walking up to people's houses and they're like, oh, no, that's fine. Come on in, you know. And it's yeah. only going to get worse unless we, you know, intellectually rise up, practice intellectual self-defense, which is knowing how to deal with the words and the lies and to process them and remove the fallacies so that we can actually find knowledge consistently. Absolutely. You wanted to get into Huxley. I heard you mentioning him. Or well, you had mentioned Huxley before, and I couldn't help uh, thinking about the ultimate revolution speech that he gave at Berkeley, I believe, in 1961 or 62, where he says, you know, we're going to make you love your servitude, and that the human being, if you don't think between stimulus and response, they're going to have total control, because there's a unity box on everyone's wall, and it's, it's giving you the corporate media. It's giving you all the same news on every channel, you know, different logos. It's all the same news. And so you have to get beyond that. You actually have to start using your observation skills and go beyond what they're showing you, and that's where the real world is. And that's what I think people can discover as a function of state of mind is they can grow, they can outgrow the status quo. Well, we found a uh, uh, an interview with uh, Mike, Mike Wallace. Uh, 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 I'm sorry, yeah, Huxley was on there, uh, 1953, and he basically described the, ex the, the world we're living in today. You know, and, and, no, he and, said, and "Brave New World is our plan." Yeah, and talking about the pharmacological control, you know, uh, of the anti-authoritarian personality. I mean, there it was. It's we we, we see it every day. I mean, the, the the kids are drugged. Every I mean, anybody goes in for the the slightest thing, it's like, oh, just film full of pharmaceuticals. And, those, and then say you have no rights once you've been. And those are results of the psychedelic revolution, which was part of MKUltra subproject 58. Yon Irvin at Gnostic Media has done a lot of great work on this because there are CIA documents, FOIA request documents, where you can see J.P. Morgan and company getting the financials. Here's how much money they're getting out of CIA MKUltra subproject 58. And that goes in the Time Life magazine of May 27th, uh, 1957. May 13th, 1957, Time Life. It's the introduction of, uh, introduction of magic mushrooms to the world through Henry Luce's Time Life magazine run by C.D. Jackson, who was psychological warfare specialist who worked with 
uh, Nelson Rockefeller. But then, it, but then it backfired and they wanted yeah. it removed. Yeah. And then they brought out the Prozac. Yeah, that's exactly right. And you know, most of these psychotropic drugs are uh, just a, a synthetic LSD without the, the trippiness to it. So they are very, you know, like molecularly, they're very similar. They got them in dream states. Yeah. Program state. So people on this, 20% of the public roughly, are on a mind control programming drug now to be interfaced with the subliminals. Johnny Appleseed was born during the Revolutionary War. He's not just a legend. And in more than five states, he introduced apples that had not even been grown in the colonies. Later, the seeds from plants he planted and cultivated and some of the varieties he developed spread across the United States. And it was Johnny Appleseed teaching the colonists and then the new Americans after we won independence the love of planting fruit trees that introduced that idea to North America. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a revolutionary act to unplug from the television, to unplug from the computer and all the globalist propaganda and to go out in your backyard or your front yard or planters at your apartment or on the roof of the building where you live and to plant a garden. Become the Johnny Appleseed of your community with seeds from the InfoWars Seed Center at InfoWarsStore.com. The simple act of planting fruits and vegetables and then tending them and taking care of them and then sharing them with friends and family is a revolutionary act against tyranny. The globalists, first and foremost, do not want us to be self-sufficient. The crony anti-free market capitalist, the fascist, are using socialism and collectivism to shut down societies. Stalin in Poland and in Ukraine and other areas starved on record more than 10 million people over five years by not letting them grow their own crops and collectivizing them. Mao killed between 65 million and 80 plus million people doing this same thing. The UN says they will use food as a weapon. They use genetic evil to attack the earth and major GMO companies have been caught going into growth belts around the world, even where GMO is illegal and planting seeds everywhere to infect the genetics of the original crops. Almost all of the thousands of varieties of Mexican corn has been infected. They are in a genetic war against everyone. That's why we have to get these seeds and not just plant them on our own gardens and not just give them as gifts to friends and family to plant spring and summer and fall gardens. I'm calling on you to go out into the green belts, to go out into the areas and plant secret gardens. No, not of marijuana, but of the hundreds and hundreds of incredible high quality uh, vegetables and herbs and fruit plants that are here. Lemons and oranges, the list goes on and on. They will grow uh, plum trees, grape trees. They will grow almost everywhere in the U.S. We can literally, not just buying these products from InfoWarsStore.com, but from wherever you get them. This aggressive program literally just came to me one morning when I woke up about 4 a.m. realizing that we've got to counter their genetic war against us with original real crops developed over eons on this planet. We have the lowest prices we bought it in the biggest bulk that some of these companies have ever seen to ship this directly to you from the InfoWars Command Center. We stand for life. We stand for liberty. We stand for self-sufficiency. Go to InfoWarsStore.com, click on the Seed Center, and as of taping this, we have the seven top respected brands. We intend to continue to do research and find other companies, other specialties, other varieties to really take action. The InfoWars Store Seed Center has the largest online selection of heirloom, non-GMO seeds. Check out these products from our newest supplier, Heirloom Organics. The Medicine Garden for a natural remedy. The Tea Garden that contains every important tea herb you can grow. Fruit lovers with 12 varieties. And the Tobacco Pack, additive and pesticide free. Join the gardening revolution today at InfoWarsStore.com. This is a revolutionary action we're asking you to take. Plant seeds everywhere today. Nurture them, bring them to fruit, and pass on the knowledge to others. Become human again. Discover your roots in the soil. And remember, the revolution against tyranny is growing.